I'm making this video to explain my philosophy, which is basically that you should question everything. I believe I've always had this philosophy, but it has gotten strengthened a lot in me in the last several years. I met some people who were convinced that they were right, and it confirmed what I already thought that people like that might be like. I saw in person that they really were like that. I saw what it does to someone to believe that they are 100% right. They had very definite set in stone ideals of what right and wrong is. All black and white, no shades of grey. Essentially, it boiled down to that they were right and everyone who wasn't sufficiently like them was wrong. I don't have a problem with certainty. I don't think we have certainty of very many things. I think it's very difficult to get to the level of absolute certainty. But I do have a problem with unexamined certainty when you repeat something enough times that the people who you're saying it to start to think, uh, maybe it's right, maybe that's the way it is. You see, when someone believes that they are 100% right, or that their cause is 100% right, you get to the level where you're not questioning your actions. It's gradual, but if you continue to believe that you're 100% correct, you will most likely get there. And at that point, these people may go against the rules that they have set for themselves and that they expect all others to abide by. All methods of reaching the goal become legal. And once again, my problem here is when this certainty is unexamined. I'm not talking about members of a resistance fighting against an oppressive ruler. Now that's part of my problem with not questioning. Another thing is that it can keep focus off of an actual problem that deep down a lot of people realize is there. But because everybody is ignoring it, is pretending it isn't there, is repressing their instinct that it is there, no one, or at least few, have the courage to stand up and say, this is wrong. And this is the problem with unquestioning censorship, with hiding actual problems. Not all problems can be solved right now, but if we pretend that they're not there, they're going to remain there. They might even get worse. Take, for example, African Americans. At first, in the United States, they were slaves. When slavery was abolished, they were still considered second-class citizens. And what it took for them to get accepted was protest, was going against the censorship, was bringing attention to the problem that was there, and that everybody deep down knew was there. The poor treatment of African Americans was based on xenophobia, a fear of that which you are unfamiliar with. There is no reason to mistreat someone because of the color of their skin, their race, which is an outdated idea today anyway, as we know, as science has proven to us. And that brings me to why I feel this philosophy holds up. When you question everything, the things that actually make sense will actually be able to stand the questioning. Take, for example, democracy. It makes sense to let the people, provided they are educated, provided they are allowed to think for themselves, provided we have a free press that can, doesn't always, but can, 
tell people what's actually going on and why. As long as people are able to research, to express their own opinion, to gather in public, good leadership will come out of it. Not always, but often when good leadership doesn't come out of it, it's because the candidates lied or because the people were misled. You know, it's a work in progress and it does require that people get educated and think through the politics. On the other hand, a dictatorship, once you start asking questions, which you aren't actually allowed to in a dictatorship, it very quickly crumbles. When anyone has a certain amount of power over other people, you should ask, what if that person doesn't do a good job? What if they abuse their power? Will the subject be able to either limit the power of that position or bring someone else in to fill that role. A dictatorship lacks regulation. The higher up you are, the more you're just allowed to do, and the less anyone below you can do about it. And I would argue that this really goes for most things. If you can ask questions and it still makes sense, or at least the better of the alternatives. If it falls apart once you start asking critical questions, it probably isn't very good and you should really look at why it is the way it is. Women didn't even have the right to vote until relatively recently. Now, one could make the argument that until recently women weren't educated, but then let's take it a step further and say well, why weren't they educated? If you go far enough back in time, they didn't have time to pursue an education if they were also going to take care of the house. And back then, man, not woman, had decided that women were going to run the household. However, women did not get the right to vote immediately after technology became advanced enough or they took on enough servants, that at least in the wealthier families, the woman did not have that much work to do around the house and could pursue an education. In my opinion, the problem was that, in my opinion, the problem was that for a long time, people just didn't question the way it was. People didn't question the status quo. Once again, if we do not talk about the problems, we're never gonna find a solution. Hardly any problems go away from being ignored. It is much more likely that they will only get far, far worse. So I implore you, question everything you can. And if someone tells you that you're not allowed to ask a question or you shouldn't ask that question, then think about why they might be saying that, especially if it's a especially if it's an authority figure. And as you can probably guess, I apply this philosophy to my reviews as well. Whenever I watch a movie or play a video game, I try to be critical, try to think of why is it the way it is and could it maybe have been another way? Would it have been better if it had been done in a different way? And I do of course take into account what the goal was. When I reviewed The Expendables, I didn't expect Shakespeare, I expected it to be fun and for the plot to be straightforward. And when I reviewed Inception, I expected it to go into existentialism and for it to be a psychological thriller. And I do hope I can put words to what people might find really great or really lousy about a film or a game, but I'm also not looking for blind approval it would be rather hypocritical of me to expect that. I try to be as objective as I can, and my main goal is to help people find or avoid movies or games that either are or aren't for them. And I ask critical questions only seeking to improve. 
I want to see films and video games be at their very best. And while perhaps some critics are bitter and jealous, I do still think that a lot of them, a lot of us, do just not want to see the mediums disappear into drudge and stagnation. Basically, just because something is entertaining doesn't mean it's good, and something good isn't necessarily going to be entertaining. Asking critical questions might not make you terribly popular, but someone does have to do it. If you ask me, good, objective critics, and not just of cultural exploits, are an invaluable resource, and will always be.